Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Kaz Harai. Yes, let us welcome Kaz Harai to the stage for another Sony press conference. This time we're taking a look at the disaster. The Sony E3 2006 conference here on DF Retro. And I am joined once again by Richard Ledbetter. Hello there. And Alex Battaglia. Guten Morgen, John. And yeah, gentlemen, we're here to discuss the follow-up to our 2005 video. That one was the video of dreams showcasing potentially what the PS3 would achieve when it launched. And this is sort of like uh, the dreams crashing on the ground when the reality is revealed. PlayStation 3 is not an incremental upgrade to a previous... So, this is not an incremental upgrade, Kaz says. And it's true, this is a very different machine, as we know. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's the kind of thing where you have to get a second job to afford it. <laughs> they are not afraid to tell you that. Well, if we think about the development of the PS3, we know that, you know, uh, there was the Triumvirate, there was IBM, Toshiba... Sony, they were developing the cell processor from 2001. So this is a huge, this is kind of like the final reveal of, of a project that's been five years in the making here. But yeah, the setup then, yeah. Sony, Toshiba, IBM, and weirdly Microsoft, all working on these uh, CPU <laughs> cores for years. And uh, it's interesting to see how much time and engineering was poured into this custom CPU, knowing what we know today about the Jaguar cores and um, being used in the Pro and the X and the original yeah. systems. And uh, there's definitely an indication that the GPU has become the thing. Right. So, yeah, I mean, it's an entirely different way of building a console where basically we had a visionary at the helm, Ken Kutaragi, who wanted to redefine what home computing was all about and he wanted to dovetail, he wanted to kind of use the PlayStation 3 to launch this new range of supercomputers. That's right. And uh, yeah, you're right, it's a, it's a far cry from what happened with PlayStation 4 where essentially both Sony and Microsoft went to an established vendor of technologies and cherry picked what they want and uh, kind of you know, I'd say shifted the emphasis more to the developer, I guess, in terms of what was delivered there. Yeah, more or less using off-the-shelf parts with customizations exactly. versus a completely new CPU. So yeah, there on stage you see they have they still have that silvery looking PS3 there with the four USB ports in the front, which the final original units have four USB, but that would disappear quickly. But, Initially launched in March of 2000 in Japan. So of course, Play being a Sony press conference from this era, Kaz is going to spend the first, uh, I don't know, five or ten minutes here telling us about how great the PS2 is. And it was great, but, he's, you know, it launched 2000, still selling. And we just looked this up, actually. Sony was still making and releasing PS2 games uh, into, I guess, you know, the last North American release was like MLB 2011 yeah. from Sony. Yeah. But then EA was still putting out FIFA, like up through FIFA 14. Yeah, makes on the wonder, PlayStation 2. It makes you wonder what regions those even launched in because the PS2 by that point in time was history. Oh, I mean, you know, obviously FIFA it, obviously, would, it would have been, you know, I think FIFA was still North America and Europe, of course. Yeah, yeah but, you know, there are a lot of smaller countries and a lot of uh, different territories where the console released very late, like Brazil usually, yeah, for some yeah, reason, yeah. always gets uh, the consoles really, really late or in the run. Or with absurd markup. Is yeah. Another yeah. Thing Actually, I think the last Sony published PS2 game was like 2013, and it was only in India. Oh. Okay. So, but yeah, they supported the machine for more than 10 years, which is pretty impressive. Tell partners here in the audience and around the globe. So if you had a choice, John, would you rather have the black PS3 there? No. Or the, no. Okay. The silver one looks great there. The silver yeah. one looks great. Yeah. And we, as we all know, that piano black finish they went for with the pseudo-transparent look it's a scratch and fingerprint magnet. It looks <laughs> terrible very quickly. Like, I've not seen a beautiful looking PS3 in ages, that original unit. They just don't hold up. So it's been one year since E3 2005, and as we know, Sony wanted to launch. Uh, the original plan was Christmas 2005. No, no, no. I thought it was a spring 2006, actually. Really? Okay. Or maybe it was 2005, and then 2006 spring, and then eventually fall of 2006. Right. But this mm. is... This is after they showed all those crazy demos. So people went into this E3, like the 360 was out at this point. Yeah. Um, 
it was yeah. pretty impressive, but there was still some sense that maybe it was a little underwhelming. In retrospect, it was not really underwhelming, no, but you, had games uh, play, you, know. you know, people was like, "Well, it's not it doesn't look like the PS3." Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So they kind of it was almost like an an urban legend of just how powerful the PlayStation 3 was going to be. There was still the mystique about the cell, and um, I don't know. Had we had we seen much further from PlayStation 3 post E3 or did they go into uh, quiet mode? They showed, they showed some stuff at TGS 2005 right. like they showed the Metal Gear Solid 4 demo oh, of course. Yes. Uh, they showed right. more Warhawk stuff they showed a few things at TGS that year for sure mm -hmm. so yeah they just before this PSP bit they just showed a bunch of PS2 games still coming and the PS2 still had like God of War 2 they were still releasing big games for the system and then there was uh, you're talking about the PSP PSP was still very new uh, here in 2006. And yet again, we delivered Amazing on system. the promise. <laughs> it was, yeah. PSP <laughs> is an unrivaled... They portable. really, I mean, they were really pushing hardware at that point. I think that was kind of like, as, as Kaz says, the DNA. They really were pushing uh, everything, really. I mean, the cell was uh, potentially revolutionary at that point. Yep. And um, the PSP, just amazing piece of hardware. So yeah, I can see that, you know, going into this one, <laughs> Sony had a certain cachet, you know, they exactly. had a certain sort of, there was a certain level of expectation from the users, and obviously the, I don't know, had the E3 um, presentation been debunked by this time? Or was, it st uh, was there still controversy? Was I think there was a lot of skepticism at this point, but right. I think, you know, many of us kind of, realized at that point that uh, it's not really legitimate or not feasible right. so but it looks like the PSP started off pretty strong sales numbers wise so uh, and I think you know overall the PSP did extremely well over time and yeah. by the way we had to stop for a second look at look at Kaz here this he's got that big billowy uh, <laughs> salmon colored shirt going on and he's just got that that super confident look like the confidence makes sense though after the yeah. just how amazing the PS2 did and if you have those similar forecasts for the PS3 and it's opening months to years uh, it's kind of a rude awakening at that point but to its ever expanding game library wow so PSP software I was really into the PSP during this era actually mm -hmm. it was a great machine oh wait here we what's go going on? what's he showing us Oh, well, these are the PSP games coming yeah. out. Yeah. What's interesting is some of the PSP games that would be released and announced here would end up getting PS2 ports later. Like one of the, like I think both Siphon Filter games, uh, Twisted Metal Head On, and a bunch of others did ended Liberation up. Liberation at one point. I don't so, think Liberation no. did, but the uh, Ratchet and Clank and Jack games I think received uh, PS2 ports. I'm pretty sure that one of the GTA titles. Actually, both both of the GTA games got ported over to the to the PS2. Right. But that, the PS2 ain't got shit on the, on the PS Triple. <laughs> Alright, I'm talking about that PS Triple. Actually, Kills of Liberation is a gorgeous game. Yeah. It gets really awesome looking on the PSP. And if you overclock, the frame rate is quite smooth. Because it was unlocked, actually. Oh, completely? Wow. Yeah. Sweet. See, B-Boy, no, that's my game. Okay, no, <laughs> Loco Roco is actually great. They just, they released like a pseudo emulated somewhat like high res version on a uh, PS4 I think and it's great yeah that's quite fascinating it's actually the PSP version running under emulation at a higher resolution level and with uh, injected textures oh yeah so oh. Uh, it's uh, <laughs> that's quite a fascinating way to to kind of remaster a game man the PSP I mean it looks pretty good yeah, here looking at those games they all look oh yeah talk old. man what a weird thing. This is before the smartphone era again, remember? We talked about that on the PSP video, actually. Like, Gangs of London? I'm not sure that ever shipped. Or did it? I, I can't remember. I don't remember either. <laughs> I certainly haven't played it. It looks terrible. It looks junk. Yeah. <laughs> Ugh. Okay, yeah. It's just PSP all over the place. PlayStation Portable, ladies and gentlemen. Now, one of the new and innovative ways we've provided opportunities for publishers and retailers to expand the software market on both the PlayStation and the PlayStation 2 formats was the introduction of the Greatest Hits program. 
Oh, the this is this is like t much to the chagrin of collectors everywhere. The greatest hits program. When you get the red badge or the green badge of shame on your disc, on your yeah. on your case. But the worst, and I swear, the worst I've ever seen in my life for this kind of lineup is the the PSP Essentials uh, in Europe. So what's the story there? They. I'll be, I'm, I'm going to get one right now. <laughs> a title has, must have sold 250,000 I think John showed me one of these the other day, and it's just basically okay. plastered with back. tons of stuff. No, no, no. This is just prepared. This is the ugliest box art. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've got this horrible, like, circular grid thing. You get the stupid-looking PSP essentials. They shrink the... Like, it's just... With the massive USK it's logo. It's hideous. Mm -hmm. And they all have, like, the same-looking red U... And, like, it's just... I only have one of these, and this is... I, I needed a copy of this for something I'm working on, but um, uh, the picture I saw on eBay, they showed, oh, perfect non PSP essentials version of everything. <laughs> I opened this up and I almost I was just like I almost just threw it in the trash. I, was like, I should just buy another one. But then you wouldn't have that ultra rare UMD. You know oh, you can't, you can't cool. throw that out. Now um, you know it varies per country though. Some some of the greatest hits slash essentials slash the best uh, not bad. But others Oof. The most recent update, 2.7, that launched in the end of Oh, he's talking about PSP firmware. Right, okay. This is, oh, this is so, this is peak Sony. Like, they're at E3 in a press conference, and they're talking about firmware features. Yeah. <laughs> they were the masters of what I like to call friction, where <laughs> they just slow you down before you get to what you want to actually see. So they're sitting on the, they're, he's literally goading us. <laughs> with with next generation hardware. But the funny thing is these kind of details of a talk are either things you'd hear in like an investor's call or just a blog post these days, you yeah, know? Yeah, Nobody uh, does this anymore. You know, it's almost as if he's broken out his PowerPoint <laughs> uh, with his various little tables. Did you notice how his smile has increased during this <laughs> section? Like he both knows what he's doing to the audience, but he's also loving this. Like this is to him this is the business of this very press conference. So I do like his presentation style, though, you know, clean, cut, oh. you know. No, he's bringing, yeah, no, I, I actually miss him. He was a great presenter, yeah. actually. My name is Sean LeGrand. Ciao. Okay. Tiffany. Billy Morgan. Kevin Cantrell. And my name's Brett. I'm out here. This guy's Jordan. named Brett. Town Square. Town Square, yeah. Center of the universe. All right. So, I'm awesome PlayStation. I've been so playing PlayStation am I supposed to know or indeed care the PlayStation about, them. about <laughs> these pictures? <laughs> <things. laughs> <laughs> Where this disc for blue and stuff. The old system. <laughs> oh, they're just talking the about memories of PlayStation. The controller in my hands. Okay. I like the, the hard plastic and the little knobby bits. This is kind of embarrassing. Sorry. <laughs> what is it? What is it? Wow, I love that guy's outfit though. I mean, by this point in yeah. time, we're like talking a little bit more than 10 years PlayStation, right? No, like more 11, than that. 11? Uh, um, it would have been 12, because it was 94. a 94, 94 is when yeah. it launched in Japan. My name is Murray. Uh, my name is Michael. Mark. But if you were in a, if you were in the UK, when did PlayStation launch? Was it 96 or was it actually 95, like the uh, US? I honestly don't know. I can't remember. Because everything came out, like, everything was very staggered back in the day. Japan would get it really early, and then uh, America would be, like, a year later, and then, like, Europe would be, like, a year after that often. Yeah, with games running slower. With games running slower <laughs> and bordered. Bordered, yeah. So I think the conceit here is that people all over the world love PlayStation. But they even only, went to Cape Town? But even only people who are speaking English. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They're not going to put subtitles in a press conference. Come on. Wireless. Wireless. Definitely wireless. Uh, wireless controls. I'm going to walk around the house playing. The thing is huge. I just can't wait for it to come out. Okay. Oh, okay. So wireless, oh, we wireless go controllers were a big yeah. thing. Oh. Yeah. So people were pumped for the PlayStation 3. They don't want wired controllers. <laughs> that's, that's the key takeaway from yeah. all of this. So I realized something recently when I, I did that Tetris video, right? Mm. I always joked. Uh, I, when I was waiting in line at the Xbox 360 launch in Japan, we were asking people around us, like, we were curious, what are Japanese people buying for oh, the yeah, Xbox? Right, yeah. And I asked them, a lot of people said, well, they're getting it for Tetris. And at the time, I thought that was hilarious. Like, why are you buying 360 for Tetris? But as it turns out, it's... a not really a port, but it's a version of Tetris the Grandmaster. Mm. 
uh, which is the one of the best Tetris games ever, and they're they're really good. And they, the Grandmaster Three had just shipped that year to arcades, so I could actually understand why people would be in line to get a new TGM game, even if it wasn't quite uh, the best version. You know, it's kind of funny because in the drum up to a new console release, everyone's you know curious about the graphics and the next generation capabilities of the thing. But these are people just wanting an awesome yeah. version of a game. I find that really cool. But also in Japan, usually consoles would launch with like Mahjong games mm. and stuff like that. Like that was always the thing. Or A Train. On um, the PS2 launch was bizarre. <laughs> Did have Ridge Racer though. They're still they're still doing this. Oh, okay. It's, so this was just like here's what the rest of the world thinks about PlayStation 3 after we showed our uh, conference of dreams. You know, we often talk about the global impact of the PlayStation business. And as the He's global like leader, Papa. our mission at Sony... <laughs> like, we're about to blow your minds. 599... Oh. You are not ready. <laughs> hey, bringing back an old PlayStation slogan, are we? You are not the rich. Remember that? Yeah. I love that. Was that you are not rich enough? <laughs> no, for the PS1 in North America... They, the original ads were kind of confusing, actually. They would write the letters U, R, and then not, and then they would have a lowercase e that was red. Right, okay. So, you are not ready. Mm. And then they had Polygon Man. <laughs> okay, now they're reminding us, you remember, about uh, the specs here that they revealed last time. When in a very, 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 very long what section. What is this bit here about legacy SD to full HD support? It's just the... the, the there's just the video the devices output. it video output yeah. yeah that's weird actually just because mm. they retained the analog AV out from PS2 mm -hmm. and they had HDMI on it which was a point of differentiation with uh, Xbox Our software libraries in a variety of optical disc formats will not go to waste with PlayStation 3 and speaking of delivery mediums we have already seen a diversification in the methods of delivering entertainment content to the consumers which will become even more prominent in they the years ahead. They have Compact Flash listed yes. as a feature. <laughs> which it had. Pre-installed hard disk drive. That was actually a point of contention, actually, because the 360 had two SKUs. One didn't have a hard drive. Yeah. And I think the lower-end model of the PS3 had the same hard drive as uh, the higher-end 360, but it still cost more. Right, yeah, had the 20 gig drive. When you go back in time and we think about it, how necessary or how interesting was it actually to have a 60 gigabyte hard drive in your It turned out to be very necessary. <laughs> yeah. Just the, um, the concept of mandatory installs, mm -hmm. this, was a, this was a big deal at the time because, uh, you know, you kind of didn't need it on 360. Right. 360 games just booted. From disk, you couldn't install it first. I mean, it you could actually, use a cache. Yeah, it actually caused some issues for developers yeah. uh, because they had to basically code around a very slow optical drive. So yeah, but no so, guarantee that the cache was actually there. Oh yeah, that's true. That's right because you could ship without a hard drive. Yep. Uh, the PS3 though, most games actually ran from disc. There wasn't that many that required installs. More as you got in, but there were a few, especially early on, like. This is weird. Like, you go to Ridge Racer 7 and a few others. I think Genji as well. You go to the options menu and you can just choose to install the entire game to the hard drive. Right. If you mm -hmm. Well, within limits. I think there was like a size limitation on the PS3 at the time. You couldn't go install more than like five or six gigs. Right. Which is why Metal Gear Solid 4 had to stop constantly to install data <laughs> between every channel or every chapter. chapter. Um. With benefits, though, would you say for that optional install on like something like Genji you mentioned? Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. benefits are loading times, especially like Ridge Racer. Like yeah. loading times are cut that's down true. dramatically. Blu-ray speeds are pretty low. That's right. Yeah. The, yeah, the Blu-ray was pretty slow. It was, yeah. Well, they got the Xbox 360 dropped in there. <sighs> that's that's. I always think that's extremely ballsy to mention your competitor's product in a presentation by name. Even if it's just in text, you know, I think that's... Uh, Isn't that how Sega rolled during the 90s, though? Like, Sega, their whole Nintendo. thing was built on mentioning yeah, Nintendo every, every chance. Yeah, relationship, yeah. Like, at CES, before uh, the Super NES came out, they actually had Super NES and Sega Genesis in their booth at CES, Ooh. and they let people come over and play Super Mario World and Sonic. <laughs> <laughs> Look how fast he is. 
Look how fast he is. And then they did mall tours with that. They actually wheeled the Genesis and the Super NES around to malls around the country, <laughs> and they would ask people to choose what they prefer. Oh. So they were directly saying, here's the competition right the, here. Is this the Pepsi Challenge? It was. <laughs> and the Super NES wasn't even out in North America at that point, so it was pretty ballsy of Sega to do that. Mm. And Sony's kind of, you know, <laughs> doing <laughs> some of that here, I guess. They were much more in the Kaz way. I love how that gleaming yeah, that flare on the lens flare it even has like the chroma on the outside edge. Mm. Oh. Uh, so we had to talk about this because we mentioned it the other day about how HD and you know, all, you know, 1080p, 720p. How many sets of that era were actually displaying games at their native resolution of <laughs> output? And we decided that it was pretty much zero. For the most part, most people did not have just a straight 720p set. Yeah, that's right. Especially at the time, like um, most 720p sets were generally like 1366 by 768 or thereabouts, mm -hmm. or plasmas. The lower, smaller plasmas were often just 10, 1024 by 768. Now, the only you could get native 720p displays. Typically, they were DLP rear projection sets. But that's huge. That's a big set, too. Yeah, and, not, and they're not the best. I only know one person who had a DLP set. And they were popular was, enough. Yeah. I think Sony had some, like, LCD rear projections that were also 720p, but for flat panels, I, I always understood the reasoning had to do with, like, overscan or mm -hmm. something, but it was a stupid decision because uh, for, like, game content, you're, gonna you're make, always scaling. Yeah, and so making these games that already had kind of for the beginning part of this generation, very raw image quality for the most part, uh, and then also scaling them up, and then maybe also down again, I guess, too, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, they're, they're, they're showing the consoles. So they just announced a worldwide 2006 launch. It's pretty epic. Which, was that actually the case? Did they um, actually ship so I'm pretty sure Actually, I think they did. I think within certain regions, well, he says 11 countries, because I, I remember North America and Japan for sure were around, like, exactly around the same time. In fact, some of the games you will see at E3 on the show floor are running. So going back to the display thing, I mean, I think uh, Microsoft maybe dropped the ball by not having HDMI to begin with. And they, you know, obviously uh, corrected it in time. They corrected it in time. But, you know, PlayStation 4 had it out of the box. But I got to say, Microsoft PlayStation 3. <laughs> the years are catching up. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, Microsoft, they certainly supported pretty much every type of high definition display that mm. was going. So, yes. So on my plasma, it didn't have HDMI support and it wouldn't accept uh, 720p or indeed 1080p from uh, from like an HDMI to DVI cable. Oh, wow. So I would have to, I would have, to have gone through component on that one. Actually, this is a good point. So one of the issues with the PS3 that showed up at launch immediately was the fact that it doesn't have sort of hardware scaling. Right. The 360, you could set your output independently and games would just run at that res. Whereas on PS3, a lot of TVs, especially like on the CRT side, HD CRTs, they would do 480i, 480p, and 1080i. Yeah. So if, you're, if your PS3 game only supported 10, 720p as an HD output, uh, you'd have to run in 480p mode. You couldn't, you couldn't do it, so you couldn't even play it in HD because they didn't support 1080i. And it would render out at that too without downsampling. Correct, it wouldn't yeah. even downsample, so if you run like, you know, some of these games at 480i, they're very jaggy because, but on the flip side, they often run better. <laughs> right. That was another thing we were amusing about. If they had kept more standard resolution for games at that point in time, how interesting that, how interesting that could have been basically because Games are struggling at HD resolutions at that point in time to maintain frame rate, but what if they had just been 480p? They could have looked really great and ran really well. I mean, and if you had a CRT at the time, it would have still looked really good. It's one thing that's kind of a shame in the HD transition. I guess to be fair, 480p on a CRT does still look good. Yeah, that's But, uh, yeah. It, you know, 720p okay. looks better, 1080i looks better. Yeah. And these guys are actually marketing this as a 1080p console. Yeah, that's, that's the real... <laughs> Ugh. Now, what's interesting is the system did launch with some 1080p games. Yeah, Ridge Racer, Ridge Racer, Ridge Racer 5, 7, 7 5, was one. 7, yes, yes, but yes, uh, yes. also Marvel Ultimate Alliance had a 1080p mode and it ran horribly. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we but it was there. Before, yeah. oh, oh, they're bringing out Yamauchi. Because uh, 
So every time they reveal new hardware, they have to show Gran Turismo. I wonder what it'll look like on PS5. <laughs> to be fair, this was one of the better demos for PlayStation 3. Yeah, that's right. They actually did release this demo early on for the console when it was also 1080p 60. But it was uh, not, it wasn't yet to the fidelity that GT5 would offer when it shipped. I think it was uh, 1440 by 1080 as well, quite possibly. Was it? Yeah. I, I could have sworn the original, really original cool demo, when cool it was just called G Gran Turismo HD, was 1920 by 1080 right. and then they downgraded it which for I, the final product. Which I would arguably prefer rather we'll have to than check, though. I need to double check. pixel sizes and things like that. Oh, you see that they're promoting yeah, it as full. It was just one track with like one car and time trial, so it's mm -hmm. feasible to do that at native 1080p. So just to give you some background, uh, Gran Turismo HD, uh, basically what it is is assets from GT4 boosted. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They, they, so it does make sense. This was the thing that they always did. So um, they would bring over a lot of assets from previous gen and just get them running on the new system to show a case. So like the earliest Gran Turismo demos for PlayStation 2 were just PS1 assets at 60 FPS with improved lighting and effects. Mm -hmm. So that would be Gran Turismo 2000. Even before that, Even when they first showed it. But Gran Turismo 2000, I actually, uh, I have the disc running here on my real PS2. Wow. And it looks horrible compared to the final <laughs> GT3, but it's so neat to see because it's so different. And that's what they used to showcase the system early on, but they really improved it by the time the game launched. So this may be an exaggerated statement, but uh, we feel that this is the, probably the first time for a household television to display a non-compressed baseband signal. Okay. What? A non-compressed non non phaseband signal? It may be the truth. I'll have to Google that one. <laughs> oh, there's multiple courses in this demo. That was not in the demo they released. Uh, oh, yeah. You can select from a, four, a range of four tracks. What's what, what's really funny about this demo, though, is how fast the interface is, because as we know, when Gran Turismo 5 would launch, it was one of the slowest interfaces in a game. <laughs> is Everything. it much more animated than this? This is rather static. It was really complicated. It was very slow with tons of loading and just like everything. It was awful. GT Sport's pretty good, but uh, the PS3 gen of Gran Turismo, especially 5, Menus were terrible. I do love the mouse cursor, by the way. They, they, they've always done that, yeah. or they've at least since three. Okay, so here we go. PS2 graphics at 1080p. If it's a consistent 60, though, that's kind of awesome. There I was like a lot that. of this early on, like uh, Tekken 5 Dark Resurrection got a PS3 port that was also, I think, 1080p, but it was, you know, it was a PS2 game at 1080p. I mean, this doesn't look bad, though. I mean,. Uh, Presuming those reflection maps are lining up with the things ahead, those are still running at full rate here. That's pretty awesome. The PS2 reflections were full rate as well on yeah. GT3. I don't know. I'd, maybe there's a bit of slowdown here. Hard to judge on on uh, uh, this old media piece. player. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wish we had a 1080p feed of this conference. That would be great. <laughs> It was interesting that the demo uh, selection screen had bikes as well. That's right, because they had just done that tourist, tourist trophy, trophy game yeah. on PS2. Uh -huh. So this is a uh, this is kind of weird because there's no music, there's no. It's just a replay. And they're kind of banking on the sounds of the cars, yep. which I don't think a lot of people play Gran Turismo for that reason. Usually the, the yeah. audio scape in the games, like the most criticized portion of them. Some janky uh, transitions as yeah, well. Yeah, like auto camera cuts. It's probably just, just, just Kaz standing up there <laughs> <laughs> with, with his dual shock. You mean six axis, <laughs> as yeah. they would soon reveal. Oh, my word. <laughs> oh he it runs at 60 FPS, yeah. I mean, obviously, and you can't 1080p. Tell, but, but it does look like it was slow there. I don't know. It could just be what we're watching. Uh, yeah. We're watching using MPCHC right now for review and. It, you do not get a perfect 60 FPS when watching on the PC with any footage. Yeah, so that's not the game. Weird, it's not yeah. an issue with the uh, feed. What you're seeing on the screen now is 19 by 20, 1080p, uh, HD, full HD. Uh, just for reference, uh, the average broadcast HD that you would see in, in, your, in, the, in the household now, uh, this, is, this is roughly three times the amount of information that is shown on the screen in comparison to that average broadcast HD. 
PlayStation 2 の GT4. So they're really hammering home that this is full 1080p, which it's a little funny in retrospect how much they were pouring into the 1080p message for this specific console in 2006. Yeah, when then you have PlayStation 4 and Xbox One later, maybe not even having <laughs> 1080p games. So, I mean, it is forward looking in a way because、uh, obviously. We would transition in the next couple of years to 1080p screens, kind of like I think is the majority, but the hardware just wasn't capable really of sustaining it. I think Polyphony were one of the very few who could actually produce a pretty convincing 1080p presentation.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, they were one of the few. But the game still ran better at 720. Yeah, that's right. So we did have that kind of、uh, interesting situation where a lot of PS3 titles, well, a lot,、um, games that did support 1080p would also run at native 720p as well if you selected it. Yep, and at, native 480p <laughs> at the front end. And there were, as you, know, as you say, performance differentials. They're quite substantial ones. They're doing another one? That's quite the intense presentation tactic. I don't want to say it's boring. Actually, <laughs> if, you, if you think back to the message board days, I think I recall watching this live with other people, and、mm. like、everybody was at this point like, what are they doing? Like, it was just these slow replays of, with <laughs> PS2 graphics running at 1080p. Well, yeah, and also we would have been watching on a compressed stream. Yeah. Very compressed at yeah, that point. Yeah, not、though. at the native frame rate that they're showing this at. Right,、uh-huh. right. Which doesn't we, translate. Which we, are, which we are able to show you here at least. Yeah. yeah.、Um, but、uh, so, yeah, I mean, essentially, you would have been seeing a Gran Turismo experience that would arguably have been worse <laughs> than watching it on PlayStation 2 <laughs> on your own console, which you own in the here and now. I guess that's possibly why they were stressing the resolution side of things because like, nobody's actually going to see believe it. Believe us, this、Wait. is what it looks like. like. Trust me, this is way higher than TV broadcasts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But you know, it's a problem that we still have now. I mean, you know, John and I did a video for PS4 Pro, which was basically me talking about what the PlayStation meeting actually looks like because the stream. Just couldn't、uh, tell. Yeah, it was、anything. awful. It just looks like、uh, any other stream at the time. So now we would like to take you back in the years of the Gran Turismo franchise and look back. So even on、street. this stream, it looks like a PS2. I mean, yeah, it, it does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I mean, I guess the only thing is like, you, you would see less flickering. That's about it. Well,、Maybe. I mean, this game supported 480p on PS2.、Yeah. Back in the days, this、yep. was real. It looked pretty real, yeah. He's going to show PS2, I suspect.、Uh, Look how long、uh, it's lingering on the screen. Yeah, yeah, no. Next、okay. time, GT4, just released last year on PS2. Oh, it's GT4, okay. Which looked amazing on the PS2. I like the, w- the way they're not showing full screen. Yeah, they're tr- <laughs> <laughs> you get this postage、yeah. stamp size. <laughs> Right, okay, back to full screen. <laughs> back back to GTHD. They really should have、really、showed a, a bumper cam version of the gameplay instead of the cars because that's like the big difference. There you go.、Uh, there we go. What I always liked about the PS2 games is how they tried to simulate specular highlights on the road、mm-hmm. using some clever visual trickery.、Uh, Here it looks like real specular? No, I don't think. I think, think that's think exactly、is? how it looks on PS2.、Oh. So, the irony is <laughs> that when we actually got a full blooded Gran Turismo game for PlayStation 3, it would still have a lot of PS3 assets in it.、Just、oh, to, yeah. That's PS, right. They, PS2 assets. They、rather. did that,、um, the, premium the premium cars, cars thing. thing. Oh, man. I forgot about that. <laughs> that was crazy. I can't I mean, believe they did that. They do look hilarious when you put them next to each other, definitely. But it was their way of bulking up the content. It's like, well, we only had enough time to make 100 cars or whatever it was.、Uh, here's PS2 ga- assets. <laughs> they're still showing this demo, by the way, and they're not talking. Yeah. Can you, I mean, the, the reaction, I think, from Hove at this point, everybody was like, what is going on? <laughs> like, this was the point when you started to realize that maybe things weren't going to go so well. It does seem like padding. It's、yeah. huge padding. Yeah. 
No, they're not going to show. No, <laughs> you, no, no, no. You no. have to look at this one. They're gonna, it's so different. <laughs> they're going to show. They're showing another one. But the best part is, it's like the exact same like background assets. It's just like trees and a slightly different curvature of the chorus. Oh, this one has this uh, rally. Oh, but that's not very flattering looking. Well, again, it's a P. This is the PS2 yeah, it's game. PS2 game, yeah. Oh, tearing. There was screen tearing. I saw so it. Adaptive at this point? Yeah. Yeah. Get out the way. That was one of the cool features of GT4 was the crowd system. Yeah. How they would all like run out on the track and like move around when you ran past them. That was great. And then Forza 5 launched on Xbox One with cardboard people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> See, that was cool right there at the time. That was amazing. That does look really cool when they skitter out of the way. This track looks so good in GT4, so I can see why they'd show it off here, but it's still PS2 assets, like, completely. Yeah. It, it probably looked really great in the audience, though, if you're looking at this high-res screen, you know? Yeah, that's true. I wonder what they were using in on the stage to like display, a like, what kind of 1080p display, like, a projector, I guess, or, that's, like, some kind of huge LED billboard thing like they do now? I don't yeah, know. I don't know. I would hope it'd be a projector. Because um, usually at these, like presentations uh at e3 when you go they they have these giant like array of like led elements or like it's basically a giant billboard thing it's not a real tv or a projector it's interesting there when they were out of uh when the car was out of range it didn't have a it didn't look like it had actually a, the shadow blob underneath it so they're still using like ps2 like distance values i guess for a lot of things even I'm, in this demo i mean they, they said from the beginning this is yeah, this like, is the ps2 assets i don't think they've improved anything, anything for this really. this is exactly how it looks on ps2 but running at 1080p the GT HD demo, though, I feel like they did actually make some improvements. It is it is hard to tell from the... Okay, what are they doing now? Uh, kick back to menu is one of my pet peeves, by the way, in a game design. Yeah, I hate that. <laughs> this, is in, this is insane. Like... This is this really is the point where you start to think, okay, this is the train wreck of a conference. Like, they are wasting like ten minutes at least yeah. on just this. John, please put his timestamp of when this started and when this ended right here. I, see how I, long need, to, this I is. need to put timestamps. <laughs> if you made it to this part of the video, be sure to post in the comments below and say I survived the E3 2006 Gran Turismo HD presentation in 2018 or 2019, whatever you see. This. It's like we're not even one third the way there, you know. I should have gotten the stopwatch out for this one just to see. PS3 version of the future of Gran Turismo is online to support the This is really something. They're, they're literally beaming out a logo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is, this is horribly paced. <laughs> Black screen. Yeah. With... They're trying to cause retinal burn in at this point, you know? Uh... You will never forget this. You turn, you turn away and you just see that logo. <laughs> HD, HD. Maybe it's the, the 1920 by 1080p that that's, you know, they're trying to burn it into our consciousness. Mm. Are the menus, uh, when you select 1080p output uh, for the demo, also 1080p? Or yeah, they, okay, yeah, yeah. Cool. That's nice. Yeah. Wow, look how well he's rendered by the PS3. <laughs> it looks so lifelike. Sweet skin shading. I preferred Alfred Molina uh, from last year. <laughs> when I saw GT Sport at E3 uh, two years ago or a year and a half ago, mm. I had a, an appointment to see it. I was thinking, oh, we'll just go to a demo room as always. But no, they brought us all up on a stage kind of thing in the middle of the, co or the show floor. And they had us all sit down in our pods and put our names in. Uh, and we all had to do a live networked race in front of a big audience. It was, uh, <laughs> it was very <laughs> strange. And Kaz was standing up there and like walking around the pods, like looking at us. And <laughs> Making sure you're keeping in line, in order. You could tell that if somebody was not following the racing line, he would be very angry. Okay, so we're back here. Phil Harrison really, uh, he was like the face of PlayStation for a while. Now. Yeah, but after this, you know, well, and indeed after last year. Yeah. Uh, there were a lot of comments, a lot of criticisms, uh, a lot of poking of fun, <laughs> almost. Yeah. There was enough material to keep uh, UK Resistance running for... <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. UK Resistance was great. 
<laughs> what's with the cards in his hands? He just what's kind he, of like sleight of hand here? tricked them out of his pocket. Oh, it's the, uh, yes, it's the Eye of Judgment. This is the second demo they show. They're using an eye toy camera, and it's a card game. It's a CCG that you play okay, with, good, with the camera, and it's a AR. See? So, I do think this is neat, but yeah. to make, after that interminable Grand Turismo HD demo, to immediately cut to a card game, I'm not <laughs> sure it's the smartest move. Like, the, the audience is probably rolling their eyes at this point. Well, if we think to the level of expectation there would have been here after essentially Sony presented a sort of vision of gaming technology last year, astonishing tech demos which may or may not have been real, and then we, <laughs> yeah. we get basically a high resolution Gran Turismo game. and a card game, then uh, yeah... This is more exciting though than the GTHD oh, demo. Oh, I think it is. It's it's actually technologically for this era really was it, cool. Was to that see. Uh, Richard Marks up there again? Uh, possibly, yeah. I, I didn't I, catch I, it. I didn't get a good look at him. Yeah. Oh, that Alpha. Did he leave Sony though, at this point? Because he, he did so much amazing work for the company. I'm gonna argue that. A very smart dude. Right there. He uh, he is at Google now. Oh man. He's, well, I'm not surprised. That's a good place for him. Yeah, he's doing the controllers for Google Stream um, mm. Project Yeti. I always kind of thought his work was uh, somewhat overlooked at Sony. Yeah, I don't, that's weird because he does. He really did a lot of great work. Did he work on the DualShock 4 as well? I um, think he did. I'm not sure about that. Maybe but not. I can't imagine that he did the six <laughs> axis. When you think of what he was doing with 3D cameras years ahead of Microsoft. Yeah, he was involved in the move. I think what, we just, you know, which was an impressive which controller was, at the time. It was really good. You guys are missing the excitement of this demo. <laughs> I mean, um, notice how they brought out the rubber, rubber duck ducky again. from the last conference. That's kind of cute, actually. Yeah. So I'll be back a little bit later to share some more exciting products that we're going to be showing. <laughs> more. I'll be back. I'll uh, be back. It's the uh, more exciting products. I'd kind of like to see one exciting <laughs> product, first of all. We're, we're not yet let's there. Not, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Okay, what are they going to do? This is when they pan the camera out. Is that Kaz again? Yeah, you can tell from the salmon colored shirt. The yeah. billowy shirt. I love that shirt. Look at that. It works from range. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that shirt. <laughs> the audience can't even see him, though. They're blinded by that PS3 there. <laughs> the spotlights. Maybe we should do a video on the uh, the PS3 1080p dream. Yeah, I see. Uh, yeah, kind we'd... of chart it through the years and how it all went. That's a good idea, a actually. Shapes. And it started so well with Ridge Racer 7. Which looked Which great. Which was incredible, yeah. I was thinking, 1080p wow. 60 at launch. Uh -huh. We cert I don't remember what it was, but we did learn that uh, Ridge Racer 6 on 360 ran at a resolution much higher than 720p, yeah. but it would it would just like downscale, basically. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah? I think it's yeah. uh, 1440 by 810 off the top of my head. Yeah, something like that. The PlayStation 3 is oh. as essential as the air that we breathe. Networking for PlayStation 3 is essential, as the essential as the air, air that we breathe. Wow. <laughs> and then they launched the, the PlayStation Store, and it's literally uh, a website. Like, it's... Hard <laughs> described <laughs> right out of the box Hard to take full advantage of entertainment content online or offline. Oh, oh. You got really excited there. Online or offline? Wow. Uh, this is great. It was kind yeah. of enforced offline a bit later <laughs> yeah. on. Yeah. Uh, the... Socialize and to communicate to create a space. Yeah, there were actually a fair few 1080p games early on. Uh, Full, Full Auto 2, wasn't it? That 1080p. Yeah, Full Auto 2 was 1080p. Yeah. Very choppy. Uh huh. Full Auto never ran well on anything, though. To be honest, <laughs> it was always choppy. Friends <laughs> list, voice messaging, ranking. Friends list, this video chat, peak. voice messaging. Latest info, voice messaging, video video chat. That didn't last. Especially after Xbox Live, who knew? Yeah, nah. And with that webcam thing. Yeah, the problem with video chat is people just keep getting their junk out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but honestly, nobody wants to do video chat most of the time. Right. Like... <sighs> I think people use things like FaceTime now on their phones, but I don't think it's like, it's not, it's available, but I don't think it's the, the most common thing. Well, people don't first jump to that. Th no. There's a greater time lag. The quality isn't the greatest. The purpose of seeing someone's face while talking to them 
for most conversation, it's not very necessary. It's not necessary. <laughs> Whether it be games, music, movies, or others. Well. But what is the status of the PlayStation Network before on PS2 at this point in time? It didn't exist. It didn't exist, right? They, so, they had some online games for PS2, but there was no uh, equivalent to Xbox right. Live. There really. was no network as a whole. It was just singular games, right. like SOCOM and exactly, things like that. Exactly. But yeah, I, um, if you go back on my PlayStation account history and everything, and you look back, like my first uh, download ever was like um, the MotorStorm demo or mm. Blast Factor. Oh, MotorStorm. Like back in so early or late 2006, I signed up for PSN and still have that rolling. Oh. Right here. Uh, actually running one of the first titles that was actually launched. Oh, oh. This, is, this is important. So back this, is, this is weirdly... Um, uh, relevant to right now because we're going to be looking at the PlayStation Classic soon at the time of recording this. Yeah. So hopefully by the time this is up, we'll have known how that turned out. But they're showing PSP. Game. Okay, this is... And this, to the memory stick. We okay. shouldn't talk over this. This is too yeah. important. Let me hit that. So the game profile will boot up directly from the memory stick. Here we and go. Let's see if you can guess... Uh, what the title is going to be by the way this game will actually start. As a matter of fact, this screen also brings back memories for me as well. Um, I'm sure it does for some of you, uh, and I'm sure you're dating yourself by saying that you remember. I don't know if you remember this uh, particular uh, opening. This was actually on the original PlayStation game as well <laughs> when it go. was loading the game. Of course, I'm not a very good uh, player even there. Game is powered by Namco. It's Ridge Racer. Ridge Racer! Remember that one? <laughs> All right, so let me, uh, let me go right ahead, get right into the game. Oh, this brings back memories. I don't know if it's just me, but here we go. This is great. This, this is it. This is it. This is so important to the history. <laughs> this moment, I, uh, this helped propel the meme <laughs> to what we know today. Like, this, I mean, was, this was like a fire starter. I... I can't even see it without seeing the super cut in my head of like the PSP being raised in hand and like the glorious lighting on it. Uh, Let's see if he just bumps into walls. <laughs> You're dissing Kaz's <laughs> gameplay. Yeah, he's any other game or other uh, entertainment yeah, content that's running. Now, to be fair though, what he's horrible at presenting this, but the PlayStation emulation on PSP is superb. Yeah, it's really impressive. To the point where if you connect your PSP to a CRT television, you can get a native 240p output like a real original PlayStation console. And the emulation itself is accurate and fast, so it winds up kind of looking just about like a real console. It's really impressive. So quickly add specific... So in actual fact, it's a really decent demo, which somehow descended into... <sighs> <a> <laughs> It's who it has to do with what happened after the fact. I think. I yeah. think the being able to play PS One titles on the go in your hand is awesome. It's just after the fact, everyone thought about the other demos and just kind of made a joke out it's of it. It's kind of get bunched in there. Yeah, and it's funny the way he does it. But you're uh, right, the demo itself I mean, is fine. I mean, yeah, it's, it's like in case you didn't know, he has to say it twice with like this oh, fake level. Here we go. Of, oh, here finally. Oh, he's back. Let's go shopping. Um, Oh, I'm no. going to show you, first of all, a oh, very no. quick look at our interface that uh, users will get when they switch on a PlayStation 3. And this shop interface... This is... This, uh, that's, that's right, that's the original PlayStation Store. And purchase various hideous, content. But it was uh, very slow. This one in particular dedicated to Warhawk, and it's all about... Actually, the, the, if you load up the current PlayStation Store on a PlayStation 3, it's the same as PS4 now, but it runs very slow. It's yeah. so slow, it's almost unusable. I'm surprised we haven't actually seen the P PS3 front end because it was beautiful. Actually, yeah, it was, especially on a 1080p screen. It was mm, really nice. Yeah. And it's changed, too. If you load it up now, the current version uses larger fonts and it has that sparkly effect in the background and a few other things like that. Like, the original had very small text to showcase the clarity yeah, of 1080p. Star franchise from mm. Europe. And here we have on SingStar PlayStation 3 um, oh. a really interesting combination of the power of a computer, the power of entertainment, and the power of the network all joining together. And SingStar... Who does he think he's talking to right now? Also, interesting usage of words. They really were trying to sell this thing as a computing alternative. 
Yeah, and remember it, support, it supports Linux. Yeah, yeah, they're not calling it the power of PlayStation, they're calling it the power of the computer. computer. Time HD content being accessible. Uh, I'm not sure SingStar is the, <laughs> is the, the best. premier title. It sells, no. it sells though, so. But not for your console launch, maybe. Does it sell in North America? No. no. I'm sure it did all right, but not. Educated. Against the, uh, the music. I'm going to save you the pain of listening to me sing. Um, but <laughs> Thank I you, Phil. I invite you all to uh, E3 to try it out for yourselves. We're going to be showing both PlayStation 2 and PlayStation So thus far, I have to give the conference a very low grade because we had the GTHD demo, which went on for 10 years. And then we had the Eye of Judgment. And then they went back to PSP. Now we're getting SingStar. Oh, look what's over there behind, next to Phil. You see that? It's Genji. It's, co <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> Slow drama. This menu's all right, though. It's smooth. It's yeah. very of that era, too. It has that cool little reflection yeah. mm -hmm. stuff. And that you want to download. So we're going Okay. Gonna... So we're, we're complimenting menus. How far we've, we've, <laughs> we've fallen. fallen. <laughs> hey, guys, remember that Killzone demo last year? Yeah, yeah, about that. Yeah. Let's check out some SingStar menus. Look at that rack behind them with all the PS3s. Yeah, it looks like something out of the Matrix. <laughs> well, you can literally in. plug into the Matrix. This is part said. of the parental controls that you would expect uh, to be part of the PlayStation Network platform. I wonder what the audience is thinking right then. What is that? Were you at this, were you at this conference, Richard? I wasn't Richard? at this one, no. Um, or was I? I can't remember, <laughs> honestly. Were you, were you at the 2006 I, show? I believe This is I was. so unnecessary, oh my gosh. They don't oh, need no. to show anyone doing this. No, right we don't need this. this, this is it's stupid. the same gameplay as you see on PS2 games, just with higher definition so, videos. Think about this as well. So GTHD was using PS2 assets. This could be a PS2 game here. And the Eye of Judgment was using a PlayStation 2 eye toy. Yeah, so right. everything here is very PS2 still. The community and the sort of concept of my SingStar was something... Imagine if they, if they stopped now and then they announced the price. <laughs> right. <laughs> this is what you get. So do we actually see anything, well, to put it bluntly, interesting? Um, do we see MotorStorm in this one? Um, uh, no. But it came out like within months. Yeah, well, it had a demo at a launch, demo at and it launch. came out in Japan that uh, like December, a month after it was December. Yeah. I imported mm -hmm. it. And it, it was, was an awesome. incomplete version, though. It was missing online play. It had the really slow menus. But to, to but to be able to have that shipping in some shape or missing form. Missing online play. That recalls yeah. you know Drive Club kind of things. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But yeah. The, so yeah, it is interesting. They did actually have stuff in development, but for whatever reason. Stop a game from Japan, which is being oh, developed by That's Game Republic. Um, so first of all, I will say uh, this game looks pretty amazing now. If you load it up, it's 720p. It has like 4x MSAA, has uh, per object motion blur. Why? Has uh, like 8x AF. Ashen game, which Here is based go. on Japanese history. <laughs> uh, being based on history, the um, stages of the game will also be based on famous battles which took, actually took place in ancient Japan. <laughs> For example, this battle of uh, Ichinotani, oh, no. uh, the player will have to battle against hundreds of enemy warriors. There will okay, also so be stages so yeah. <laughs> where, where there will be fighting on horseback and stages. Um, where there, where there will be uh, massive sea battle sequences, which can only be made possible with the power of the PlayStation 3. Okay. The team at uh, Game Republic has come back to us with a lot of great... It's hard to see here, but is there the pair object blur in this demo? I don't know. Well, it's... I'll show it to you later. This yeah, one, yeah. They do per object blur in a weird way. It's okay. not quite... It's, it's not, not, it's not the, the velocity blurs right. that we're used to. It looks like it, sort of. Okay. But it's like a, it's a different approach. The animation, though, is very PS2. And one of the things, though, that's kind of a shame is that um, the PlayStation 2 original version is the better Oof. game by far. And uh, it runs at 60 frames per second as well. Which this one does not. For a game like this, this is usually their, their draw, right? That they run at 60 yeah, or so at the least main, the main issue, So the main issue with this one compared to the original, the original had a lot more uh, variation in locations and just like uh, oh, level design. <laughs> this game features a lot of arenas. 
And it's just like you go from arena to arena and down boring hallways and just fighting enemies in a very slow, repetitive way, and you can swap characters in real time. <laughs> so this historical battle is, is taking a, an interesting <laughs> turn. turn. Yes. The, the, the mechatronic... Uh... <laughs> First, um, I'm gonna have so to defeat this. So we've got this picture-in-picture picture of the controller. Mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure why it's there. Possibly yeah. to emphasize it's that it is real time. Real time. I mean, but even then, the kind <laughs> yeah. of the poor performance and the person playing not playing perfectly yeah, should, should emphasize I'm that. I'm not enough. sure that there's any doubt that this is real time. <laughs> Oops. Right. Oh. So you have a uh, particular dislike of video with bad gameplay yes Shot. that drives me nuts <laughs> so i usually try to do good gameplay in my videos so are you quietly wow that frame rate right, everyone oh. i don't think that was on purpose oh, so here's this giant enemy crab <laughs> what i'll do is use benke here <sighs> i mean to they do say based on historical battles, based on, on real history. So, so, you know. So you what? <laughs> I'm trying to give this poor guy some, uh, some help here. here. He didn't know. Yeah, he yeah. probably didn't want to demo this. Well, I want to know if that weapon you're carrying about is historically accurate <laughs> as well. <laughs> big giant <laughs> column. Yeah. The the stuff the hold on oh, Controlling him feels terrible, by the way. Is this like tanky controls? It looks like No, it. it's not. No? But he's just very slow, and right. the animation isn't great on him. But honestly, I think the original Onimusha is better than this. I'll switch over to Yoshitsune, hop on its stomach, and you attack its weak point for massive damage. <clears throat> there we go. We'll be able to find all these new different ways of playing massive the game. Massive damage. Um, this version that we're showing you right now, uh, at it was especially created for this event so that the um, enemy characters yeah, the will be final. killed with yeah. one blow. But uh, you'll be able to enjoy the full, full version at our E3 booth. Bill, thank you very much for that thank fantastic you. demonstration. Well done on the demo guy. I mean, fantastic demo. I don't know what else and they could have much? shown of that game that would have made it look more exciting. Um, very easily, <laughs> yeah. for the intro level. Or is that a cooler one? I'll show it to you, yeah. but it's uh, it's this whole dojo that's like on fire with amazing fire effects uh, everywhere. Legendary Japan to uh, reality 21st century style. And we'd okay. like to show you now our Formula One game for PlayStation oh. 3, but with a couple of interesting well. twists. So this was one of the ones that had the fake demo in 2005. Mm. Remember where they showed that oh, yeah, uh, Formula One game was where it had that completely really hilarious insane. animation with the car like yeah. spitting out. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so this is obviously the game now. Yeah. I'm going to give you a very special demonstration of a wing mirror. So let's uh, <laughs> oh, do oh, oh, a look, quick look. swap here. And thank you very much, go. Nino. This is actually kind of what I have running on a PlayStation Portable here is an interactive wing mirror, which is actually being rendered in real time. And this is being synchronized directly with the PlayStation 3 to give you an accurate position looking back. They're not even showing it, though. It's, it's, oh, there it is. See, the thing is, it's nifty, but like any sort of dual screen game, yeah. it's a distraction. This was a bad life. idea, but it's uh, a neat tech. I don't think this ever actually shipped in this way. Right. Yeah, like, that was my question. Like, as soon as you have to look at the screen to the left, uh, or right of you, or above, or right next to you on your couch, or something like that, you're just not looking at the game. I'd, it looks cool in this presentation, but it's so useless. Synergy. Yeah. The, uh, the, the development implications are quite scary as well, because it means you've basically got to have your game running on, <laughs> on a PS2. two entirely different systems. Yeah. Quit. Okay. That's a great way to end the demo. <laughs> With the menu. <laughs> Fade to PlayStation. It was premiered for the first time okay, here we go. just under a year ago. Um, I'd like to introduce Tamim, the uh, chief design ninja from uh, Ninja Theory, oh, the him. creators of Heavenly Sword. Over to you, Tamim. Company now owned by Microsoft. Okay, this demo does look really nice. Yeah, this is the one where we said it was real time, where we were really sure that it was a lot of real time stuff in the original demo they showed in 2005, other than like some FMB sequence stuff. Um, and this still looks really great, I think. This scene, I believe, does exist in the final game, this like arena, but uh, a lot of the game runs poorly. The frame rate is low. 
You can okay. see the tearing there. Actually, that was the pro that was the problem with the final game. Was there's tons of tearing. This does look good though. This demo. This is the best looking thing I think we've seen thus far, by far. Especially after coming from Genji to this, this looks much more fluid. Look at oh. the. What, what about those floor textures? Is that palm? No. They or is that just normal maps? It's hard it to tell in this video maps, feed. But when they did go um, kind of like low level with it, it didn't like distort on the ground. I think it is just a nice normal map. The full game does not have palm, I with don't a think. Lot, with a lot of contrast in it, so, yeah. so it looks good on a screen. So the AI of all the characters, and this allows us to get a really rich. Uh, gameplay system which we encourage you all to try out for yourself when you come and check out the game at E3 but uh, let's see Tamim do some more mayhem here <laughs> <laughs> let me just interrupt really quickly yeah. more mayhem please <laughs> <laughs> so this was an interesting game at launch this was not launch uh, sorry when it launched oh when it launched yeah, yeah. so uh, because, yeah, yeah. I mean, for the uh, PlayStation aficionado, there was always the search for justification that your console was worth waiting that extra year yeah. for. And, you know, arguably when MotorStorm appeared, you thought, wow, this is something that's better than anything I've seen on the, on the, the 360. I mean, and when you're looking at uh, how this game presents, you're thinking, wow, this looks really good. Yeah. I don't know, that kind of does look like Palm, or something like it. Right, right? it does, it kind of does. It does, but you're saying the... Uh, well, maybe it is, I can't remember in the final game. Do you, You've had, you have a history of recently <laughs> guessing uh, usage of Palm incorrectly, yeah. So. Yeah, I'll never let myself that you know, down for that. But. I do have this game, yeah. Hopefully I actually have the disc, because I opened the lair case the other day, and there's no disc in there, so it's uh, somewhere. Uh, Just like Lightning Returns, I must have them in a disc wallet somewhere for some reason. I'm going to be the person who says showing off QuickTime events is very of this era. Like, I think a couple years later, oh. if you did that in a game demo, showing yeah. off QuickTime events, you're going to get skewered. <laughs> All right, to me. It's the first smile I think we've had from uh, <laughs> Phil Harrison. He's like, finally, we showed something that looks okay. <laughs> uh, the stage here to give you the maximum uh, impact of the games that we're going to be uh, revealing for PlayStation 3. But we also wanted to show you a quick video of some of the games that are perhaps a little bit further out. So let's oh. run the video. So this is early. Oh, there. Wow, where do we begin with this one? Well, this seemed like, like a shoe-in because Factor 5 had done a lot of amazing work. They were huge on Nintendo systems, and they were known for pushing technical boundaries. And this game shipped with a 1080p mode. Not native, but it was like 1440 by 1080 or something. So, do you think this game just suffers under the control implementation the most? Or so, is it something else? I actually think... I don't dislike this game. It does play a lot like Rogue Squadron. Um, and they did patch in fixed controls. Mm, okay. and the fact, Well, in the sense that they patched in traditional analog controls. Uh, so that is an option. But when it launched, it was motion control only. Yeah. And it was very weird. Is that actually the game? Mm, I think that was CGI. Right. Hard to tell from this feed. I mean, the game does look very impressive. But the performance is not optimal. Oh, what's this? One studio. Oh, this is that thing that never shipped. Yeah, yeah. the getaway. Uh, Pseudo sequel related thing. Yeah, again, it, I'm not sure if it's real. I'm, I'm going to say no. Just because that's decadent detail for the yeah, era, too I much. don't think that's real. But if it's just a closed demo with no AI or anything, then it's fair to say they could have done that as a real-time render. Yeah, this, this probably isn't, not a production this isn't game. Isn't a game? Yeah, because <laughs> the demo last year was weird in that it had tearing. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was real time on something. The original getaway, though, is very interesting to look at now because they were really trying to do a lot of realistic things. Uh, it was slow paced, you know, there was like almost no HUD. Um, you had to rely on turn signals to know where to turn it. Well, that's kind of cool, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this! This again. Africa! Africa. This did ship. Yeah. Yeah. 
Which is basically kind of like photo mode the game, right? Yeah, you go yeah. around in a jeep and you take photos of things. <laughs> and it is 60 FPS? I don't think so. Okay. Not in the final. <laughs> Maybe. I, I don't think so, though. Photo mode. Okay. <laughs> well, that's what I remember. O honestly, <laughs> you launch photo mode the game now, and I bet people would appreciate it more. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. photo mode's a big thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Good you can't afford work. the trip to Africa anymore after you buy a PS3, so. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Might as well get the best of it. <laughs> this is pretty much like this is the correct reaction to the PlayStation 3 thus far. It's just will the beast noise. A load of bull. So somebody somewhere put this trailer together and said this is the future of okay, <laughs> this is how we're going to showcase. Uh, it does seem more like a 90s title. A little bit, but yeah, this, seems like, this does seem like 2006 era soon. Yeah, it seems like something Microsoft would put on a CD-ROM. Yeah, oh, is this going to be Mina no Gorfu? <laughs> this has got to be that, yeah. So this was a 60 FPS title. See, I don't recall this at all. I think it was 60. Okay, yeah, this was 60, yeah. yeah. This... They're still making these games now. They're good. Yeah, these are fun great. golf games, yeah. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these they still kind of hold up in a way. The sound effects. Yeah, yep. yeah. That's what made it. it was like ex this always reminded oh, me of oh Neo no. Turf Masters in a way, but like in a modern. Oh, it's Africa. Product tie-in. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wow. see that that that's a good game. Mm -hmm. What's this one? Oh wait, what? Oh, this is a, a folk folklore. I forgot about this. This is really good, actually. It's, what? It, it's, uh, what's going my, on? My memory of it is completely blank, so. It's I don't a strange this action at all. RPG. Okay. CGI bits here. Yeah, related. for sure. Yeah. Oh, they call it Monster Kingdom. Pretty sure that's called Folklore in the final. Oh, it's his working title. Okay. So there yeah. is a glimpse of some of the future of PlayStation 3. So, yeah, please, round of applause for the great work there. But wow. still, like, when you come out the end of it, showing the future, one of those games didn't even ship, and a couple of them are just not very huge premiere so very, titles. Like, everything they've know? shown thus far is very strange, and I have to imagine a lot of it just comes to the, down to the fact that nothing was ready. Yeah. Like, they showed what they could. The first one of which is from our studio in London. And let's take a look. Phil just kind of looks despondent. He does, <laughs> yeah. Looks, you know, almost ashamed. So oh, here is we this go. eight days or whatever? Or? Yeah, eight days to Vegas or No, no, no. What? No, just, it's just eight days. It's just eight it? days, I think, yeah. This is totally I fake. I think this is, looks really fake. One, the camera, the motion blur. Everything about this is uh, fake. I don't even know if it's running at 30. It kind of looks like a 24. Yeah, it looks like they're trying to be 24 FPS and they're showing fake gameplay. Did you see the hood there for a yeah, second? Yeah, this... Um, look at that, the, look at that, that fake detail hood. detail and everything. This is... I find this... This is actually... If they showed this at 2005... This is, this is this insulting, been, though. Yeah, this is pretty bad. That's clearly meant to rip off the Mercedes S-Class Coupe from that era. If, if, if I was playing a game and it cut to other people playing yeah, and like other characters, I would not play this game, by the way. <laughs> this is so be... This, this is ridiculous. Yeah. Come on! Oh, volumetric, volumetric lighting. Volumetric lighting, lighting everywhere. everywhere. With like... And all this... Ugh. Look at... This is... This is insulting. Come on, guys. No. I think I like the deformation the most. Game nowadays. Look at that! <laughs> yes! The power of the well, PlayStation, PlayStation 3! It's all cell, baby. Uh, Who was sitting there going, yeah, this is obviously real time? <laughs> 
They didn't change the name of that game at any point in time? It never came out. Okay. Just like a sort of... Ah, yes. All those real-time flu fluid oh, simulations. Fluid simulation. Just want a picture of uh, Katsu Ken Kutaragi, picture in picture, nodding <laughs> happily. Yes. My vision. Cool guys, don't look at explosions. That's right. An eight days demo in the previous year. Yeah, yeah. Which and was it was previous. It was just was showing the exploding BS. gas station. Yeah. Yeah. Now they showed at the end. That was a nod to the 2005 demo. Coming to a PlayStation 3 near you soon. I don't know about you, but I'm convinced. <laughs> computer Entertainment Worldwide yeah. Studios Group. And this is a developer who, since their first game back in 1996, the has shipped over 40 is... million units. Yeah, like, no pace, plotting, bored sounding. It's bored sounding and uh, almost a hint of self loathing. <laughs> yeah, what have <laughs> I done? <laughs> So this is actually kind of cool, um, but... Oh, it's Uncharted! Yeah, yeah. so yeah, that's... And um, this demo looks quite different from the final game, but the final game kind of looks better in some ways. And... Yeah, it should, for the most part. Probably the only thing, like, since they're showing a lot of, like, in intimate close-ups here for some things, like, I maybe that. the assets will be a little bit, like, higher poly. But clearly, the but, like, uh, Uncharted 2 and 3 look dramatically better than this. Yeah, like... Like, it's not even close. How They came a long way. The lighting looks really flat here. Yeah, yeah. it does. It looks I mean, very flat. If you do technically play this game on PlayStation 3, it still looks pretty flat because it's like pre-SSAO. Yeah. It's like, you know, there's a lot of techniques that Naughty Dog would use in later games they that are just not here. Yeah, they hadn't know? developed it yet. Uh, but it still has pretty good textures. I think that's one thing I always liked yeah. about Uncharted. Um, you know, this is still kind of using like their approach to animation that they had in the PS2 era, I would yep, say. Yep, exactly. Like, where it's pretty cartoony looking, and like, uh, like a different type of exaggeration. It's not like Pixar style, you know, CG film exaggeration, but like, a little bit robotic. So for our final demonstration of this section of the presentation, I'd like to welcome to the stage Mr. Ted Price, the president Oh. Project I-8, which I think is now going to be called Resistance here. Resistance, Fall of Man. Right. And we saw this last year yeah. in, in another very yeah, suspicious yeah. looking... It looked really suspicious then. It had terrible frame rate issues in that demo. Yeah, it was weird, but it was but, unlocked. But it, was, but it also had like assets and things like that that didn't look like they were from the game at all. If this is a 1950s that... Good old Ted. Example, they do great work there. Also another ill-fitting shirt. Yep. <laughs> Billowy. at the hands of an unknown species. This scourge has obliterated populations across Asia and Europe. And in the game, you take the part in the last ditch efforts to save the last free state in Europe, England. Now this game is intense, bleak, and brutal. It was cool that they had this out as a launch title. And they did a good yeah. job on it. It was an important title for the system to launch with. Yeah, like a complete game that is more or less pretty impressive. We were, yeah. John and I were just playing it the other day. I mean, other than some things in it, it still looks pretty all right. Yeah, um, actually, because it's but, not it doesn't go heavy on like the specular. Everything. Yeah, so not, it's what aged better. It just yeah, it, look, it aged well. The lighting is very simple. Yeah. And it does look like a transition title between PS2 and PS3. It doesn't take advantage of, like, shading features that you'd expect so much. Right. But the performance is pretty good. Mostly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this, this looks like the final game. Way, yeah. Same hood, same weapons. Like, yeah, I'm pretty sure this exact scene is in there. He tossed a grenade and it rebounded off yeah. the uh, the pillar in front of him. So has I, kill. from what I understand, I mean, uh, whenever Insomniac gets up and shows a demo on stage, they're always doing it like live, respect controlled. Yeah. I remember them saying for Resistance Two, they had such a narrow path they had to follow to avoid crashing, that they, like, everybody's like, you know, gritting their teeth the whole time. <laughs> Oh, <laughs>
But yeah, doing a live demo like this on pre-release software is to be very stressful. Uh, one thing I think that may have changed is... What's that? Does, what's that? does the, uh, the, the one weapon he's using, like the, uh, the alien-type weapon, does mm -hmm. it actually... Does the... The little um, tube on it actually jingle as much in the final game. I can't remember that. I we were just remember. playing it the other day, but maybe they just changed some animation stuff for the final game. So I'm watching this and I'm kind of thinking, what's happening on the Microsoft <laughs> presentation? What games are they showing? Years. Yeah, I guess well, what, we'll have to look at that one as well because yeah. I can't remember what Microsoft would have been showing this year. Because the 360 was out and already impressing people, oh. and this this at this E3, I think they released a demo for Lost Planet, which looked better than every Everything, single thing yeah. shown at the well, PS3 yeah, that, conference. Yeah, that was that was a funny thing. We were kind of musing about the explosions in this game when playing it. We we're like, but then oh, Lost Planet came out, and those explosions still arguably look pretty great. They do, and it has so, per object blur. Yeah, it just a, it was a beautiful game. But typically, you see at 2006, you know, you'd, you'd see the games that are likely to appear in 2007, which was a really good year for the 360. So I am kind of curious now to see the context of the whole thing. That year head start for Microsoft was huge, massive. yeah, absolutely massive. So yeah, I mean, this, you know, it's resistance. It's um. One thing I will say I like about Second this game time. is that it's not that heavy on scripted sequences. Like you just kind of keep moving through the level more Halo style than like what Call of Duty would become. Um, but we did remember the forced. Um, oh, they force you into controls. Uh, oh yeah, when a monster they haven't revealed the successes yet, but when a yeah. monster gets up to you in some of those levels, you actually have to shake the controller to <laughs> get him off, which is uh, again very of the era. Okay. A small taste of what's to come with Resistance Fall of Man. And keep in mind that the game also has full featured multiplayer modes, including. So Insomniac was in beast mode during this era. They had Resistance at launch, and then one year later they had Ratchet and Clank on the PS3 running at 60 FPS with parallax occlusion maps yeah, everywhere, tons of particles and physics, and like tons super of enemies detailed, on screen, and like lots of great animation. Like what a what a technical powerhouse that game was. And it does it does make me lament that they switched over to the 30 FPS titles basically completely after that. Uh, it looks so good at 60. Think about how many games they released during this era though they were yeah. cranking out games at such a high speed and even i would even say after sunset overdrive they've been cranking honestly out games yeah too. you know what you know. they're still doing it they did sunset overdrive ratchet and spider-man on consoles but then they did all the vr games for oculus yeah, and exactly. probably something else i mean they these guys are very efficient and amazing the fact that they could pet out a game like spider-man while still doing all those other things like, <laughs> yeah great studio and back to cars thank you back to cars <laughs> Three podiums. Wow. We should have a debate. Woo. Thank you, Phil, <laughs> Look at that. and your team oh, at man, he's so Studios excited. for being here today and sharing some truly exciting and remarkable titles for the PlayStation 3. <laughs> Our first party lineup is looking pretty strong, but what about third parties? Things are, how are they looking pretty good. <laughs> now, this is interesting. Third party, how much of this will be Xbox 360 footage is always the question. Well, let's find out. And there's millions of screens. Well, that's a lot of screens in there. Oh, Assassin's, Assassin's Creed, Creed CGI. Yeah. So we'd seen this specific trailer already, hadn't we? Uh, maybe. I can't remember. I want to say this is the first piece of media, not from on Sony, but this is the only Assassin's Creed media that was originally out there. And it was a longer trailer, so that yeah. we'd seen that already We'd already before. seen that then, I guess. Oh, this. Oh. This game launched with such a low frame rate. And this is 60 here. Yeah. So oh my gosh, when yeah, this came out, like, that. this is such a terrible, choppy mess of a game. Like, absolute garbage. Yeah, everybody thought this looked amazing, and it does look nice in this trailer. Oh, wait, wait, actually, no, I might be wrong. What? Is this... Are you thinking of a different game? I actually don't know which one this is. Gundam. Gundam. Well, we'll no, I think that's the bad one. Because they also did a uh, Gundam Muso, which was like the Dynasty Warriors game that was 60 FPS. This is oh, this, this is coded was canceled. Arms, right? Yeah, Coded Arms. So, is, which is, is a kind of interesting PSP title. Yeah, originally. they did the two on PSP. Yeah, but this PS3 one looked awesome. But as I understand, this was trying. They were developing this with Unreal Engine 3, 
which Ooh. doesn't doesn't work well in PS3, especially no. at the time. Like it eventually was okay. But, yeah, post uh, oh. early on, it was a rough, and it was a Japanese game. So, so they probably Japan didn't have great plus UE3 plus yeah. PS3 equals nightmare. Oh, this is when they teased New Ridge Racer, but little did we know it was basically an upgraded port of Ridge Racer 6. But I like Ridge Racer 7 and 6, so no no real complaints there. Uh, but it see, doesn't it does, does not, not look, look like, like that. that. <laughs> uh, I, Although to be fair, there are a couple of tracks set at the time of day that look really good. Uh, Plus it's 1080p, so that was well done. Okay, what's this? This brother in arms. Oh, it is. Uh, yeah, right. which is this is 100% BS. This yeah. trailer, it was BS on every system. Uh, <laughs> it's I find it kind of unforgivable. They're not showing the full thing; they're just showing the end of it. Yeah. But um, it's a good game though. In the end, I, I do like that game quite a lot. It's a shame they haven't made oh, another. Oh, Tekken. And this was such a step down from that trailer last year. They said the, <laughs> the CGI With models. Like, more polygons. Than also, any but game Tekken ever. Six would go on to look much better than this. Had the beautiful per object blur yeah, and like would. better like shaders and you know uh, materials and just the final game looks nice, but this demo does not look so impressive. That's some sort of DMC callback there. I don't know. <laughs> oh, our boy. That's accurate. But so this game is 60 FPS at least. This footage is not. Although on PS3 it's not smooth. Oh God, this was before the disaster happened. Yeah. At the time I was thinking this is my launch PS3 game. <laughs> this is the one I wanted the most. I'm not even joking. And it was... I got it for 360 because it got delayed on does, PS3, and it was terrible. Does the game actually have motion blur like that? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This engine looked great in some ways, but the game was just unfinished. Oh, Virtua Tennis. I think this is a... Uh, I think one of these got a 1080p release. Yeah, I think it was Virtua Tennis 3. It was 1080p. Yeah. This game looks... This still looks great. Look yeah. at this. Like, just the art and the... The game is 60 FPS. This footage is not, but the actual game is definitely 60. Yeah. I love these games. It was great on 360 as well. I played so much of the original on Dreamcast, though. I could even play on the VMU. <laughs> I was good at that. Okay, VF5 looks like this. Uh, I had played VF5 uh, at the location test in Japan when it first was and revealed, and it blew. It looked amazing, and it does look amazing here. Like the lighting and the choices of it. It's, I think it's a great looking game. Even now, it holds up. That was good. I mean, that's AM2 there. Midway. What's this? Oh, Stranglehold. Uh, Unreal Engine 3. I wish this game was better. Because I really love hard-boiled yeah, kind of films. I, don't, I think it's like okay. Yeah, I thought it was a good it's, game. It's good, but not great. It actually worked out okay. All oh, this. Actually. This is such a crazy thing here, this game. Because this game took forever to come out. Uh, and then, I think it launched first on Xbox 360. Because they couldn't get... like It was Unreal Engine 3. Mm. And then it came out later on PS3 as like an enhanced edition. But... It was revealed as a PS3 game first and foremost, and it was like I think it was even should, supposed to be an exclusive. Wow! Okay. But then it, when it finally came out, it was 360 exclusive, and then it came for PS3 later. Fade to inertia, and it was not a launch game. You can see that <laughs> it was not. Unreal Engine. Oh, what is this? Honor. It's another Koei game. With a bad um, frame rate. Um. Oh, this is this is like Blade Storm or something. Oh, that's that's. Not in game. I'm pretty sure that this turned out really bad. It's the pound of a cell. I mean, they're showing se segments that are running really poorly at this point. Yeah, this but then is also Blade segments Storm, that the Hundred Years War. It was not a launch game, I don't think. No way. Oh, is this Gundam Muso? If this is what. No. Oh no, this was Armored Core Four, which looks phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, but it runs horribly on PlayStation <laughs> Three and much better on 360. Like the 360 version is solid, but the PS3 version is terrible. But it's a beautiful game. This is From's uh, engine. They would yeah, use a yeah. lot of this with Dark Souls or Demon Souls as well. You can kind of tell, right? Yeah, you can see it in there. Their t their approach to rendering this gen, I I really liked it back then. Like it, they went for this like really like overexposed, like kind of gritty, mm -hmm. grainy look that was cool. Woo! All right. Woo. Round of applause for. I mean, that was actually a good lineup of games, really. Like, so, some cool stuff to show, some fakes. Yeah. This company back on tour stage. What's this? They have been a staunch supporter of the PlayStation format. Going to be Electronic Arts, I bet. We are truly inspired 
what they have, for what they have under development on PlayStation 3. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me to welcome back Electronic Arts Chairman and CEO, Larry Probst. Larry, Larry yes. Probst. You guys ready to talk about sports? Because we're going to be sportsing all day. <laughs> Let's throw some footballs. <laughs> some... Thanks, Kaz. And a special thanks to... Oh, Twitter gosh. Wow. And our colleagues at Sony Computer He looks like like Preacher, but like old. Yeah. He doesn't also look happy at all to be there, but... <laughs> to be fair, only Kaz looks happy. <laughs> Everybody That's true. Everyone is... feels like completely out just of it. mortified. <laughs> Today at EA, more than a thousand people are exploring, experimenting, and developing games for the PlayStation 3. So this is interesting. This was 2006, right? But this was just before the creative years of Electronic Arts, yeah. where they were putting out so many interesting Unique and beautiful titles. and cool titles from yeah. new teams and like Mirror's Edge and Dead Space and things like that. Like it was, it was a really cool time yeah, for EA. I do yearn for that era. And even their like sports it. stuff, like, you know, Fight Night looked phenomenal at the time. And I think the demo was out on 360 at this point. Yeah, it was. And looking insane. <laughs> Plus, they had Burnout Paradise being worked on at this time that would come out in 08. Like, that was huge. The team is excited to be, is excited about the early work on PlayStation 3. Let me start with a side-by-side -side comparison of last generation and next generation. PlayStation 2... This is a good way to get people hyped, I guess. Mm -hmm. Last gen versus this gen. Sports are about anticipation. The question is, are they going to be showing PlayStation 2 versus PlayStation 3 or PlayStation 2 versus 360? Or is it just fake? Uh, uh, it looks well, like a... What the heck? This just looks like some kind of rig test thing. Yeah, yeah it does. But it's like, obviously, like, framed out. It's got like sm smooth, smoothing. Uh, smoothing. Yeah, it's like been rendered out. So what are they trying to say about PlayStation 2 here? Like That the, the character cannot... <laughs> do anything. <laughs> thousand yards there. You can there. basically sort of rotate on the spot. Attitude, confidence, and style. We also know... That, that looks we, like a pre-rendered demo for yeah, sure. Yeah, it is. For real. Um, but you know, like, the, I don't know. I think the idea of the character looking at you is, is something, you know, games have been doing for a while now, but probably with less body awareness there. I think the biggest issue here for, for EA and Sony was when the PS3 launched, you remember the year it launched, the PlayStation 3 version of Madden ran at 30 frames per second while on 360, it was 60 frames per second. And it was, <laughs> it was not good. That happened with Call of Duty as well. Call of Duty 3 launched on PS3 at 30 FPS, was 60 on 360. Like, you see those two titles like that, and um, that's arguably a larger gap than we saw with Xbox One versus PS4 at launch, like half the frame rate. full 360 Massive. degree movement with body lean. They feel alive, they're more responsive. The, the PS2 doesn't look, I mean, I understand what they're trying to show there, but in practice, it doesn't look that jarring. Let's see how it's running live on the PlayStation 3. So they interpolate, 3. I think, between the different um, Let's step directions. into the practice gym of NBA Live 07. To the Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And explodes out of his turn, generating a quick first step with the ball. I mean, that looks... That looks okay. That I looks mean, realistic he's... enough. Like, all right. It looks like a work in progress, like demo court. Action. We've got Dwayne Wade we need to from work the on Miami. That cloth physics. Yeah, so yeah. Those, those. they are going out in and out a bit. Didn't um wasn't it the other NBA series from like 2K? Yeah, the ESPN style I think, ones. I think um, EA really struggled with basketball games for years, didn't they? They were the ones that put out like uh, what it was that what was it like NBA Elite or something? The one that got sent to stores and then canceled. Oh, wow. The finished, no. You didn't know about that? No, I don't. Where they put out a demo for this, I think it was NBA Elite, and it was so bad. Like, everybody, they, the joke was that the, the models would reset to the T-pose oh, all the no. time. And so they'd just show them, like, standing out there and moving around the court in the T-pose. And then those videos kind of went viral. And so, so the game had shipped to stores and was getting ready to launch. And Electronic Arts recalled every version of the game and canceled it outright. So wow. they finished the game, and they decided it was so bad that they would just not even try to sell it for anything. After disc production. Even after, after they'd already produced the discs. <laughs> Next up, thank you. <laughs> See, that was some non-forced clapping. Yeah, that yeah, was good. Yeah. 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 There, there has been an alarming amount of 
requests for applause. Yeah, earlier has come on. Yeah. Early work on PlayStation 3. George also won. So if this was 2006, so I guess would would Burnout Paradise have even been like in development yet, or was it still too early? Um, it would have just been like super they, early prototype. They would have been pretty early on at this point, and I think they would be on Revenge 360. Oh yeah, Revenge. That would have come out earlier that year, I think. That was 2006, so this was just after that shit. Right. Okay, so they would have been moving on to Paradise, but it would be early days. It's too early to show at a conference like this. Yeah. Emotionally. Well, you, you've seen the early builds. Yeah, yeah. And that was that was even well after this. <laughs> last two years, our team has been building a state-of-the-art process that creates the most realistic real digitizing. Oh, I see. Yeah. Video game. The technology is called playable universal capture. This also is actually this is better sportsing than usual. Usually, when the sports come out and it's just sports, 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 you know, I just like turn off my brain. Um, fake 60 FPS demo. Yeah. Job done. I mean, people talk about photogrammetry, but capturing an actor like this is yeah. basically photogrammetry. It's yeah, just, exactly. they're probably just not cleaning up the lighting as much. Exactly. You know? But, uh. Oh, this didn't age well. <laughs> <laughs> Could look better, yeah. Yes! Now! <laughs> We're gonna need that sampled right now. John, can you. That's for, okay, that's cool. That's, that's cool. He's yes. He's. Happier than anybody else at this conference. <laughs> <laughs> this conference. Yes. Play because the personalities in the game have never been more real. Now you'll Hit be able yes to see again. what it feels like to sink a 20-footer and doing the majors and force the playoff. Oh, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> or if you miss a putt. Where did that come from? That's after they announced the price. Or yeah, where did that come day, from? You uh, hit the perfect shot. I like his normal Fire. mapped shirt. Yeah. Now you can also feel and see what it feels like to crush a drive on the 18th hole at Pebble Beach. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Ooh. A little bit Whoa. glitchy there. <laughs> so, um, look for Tiger and Playable UCAP on the PlayStation 3. That's what the I'm entire about. poly budget going on. Yeah, to Tiger. There is no background <laughs> whatsoever. I don't know if the in-game model looks that great. I would have to boot up this game to see. It again. is an improvement over Lynx yeah. 386 Pro. Most definitely, but the Lynx games are pretty. Lynx awesome. LS though is the, uh, actually the Lynx games were great. Fred couples. On oh, the that's Fred right. couples. You would Golf Fred Magazine. Couples. What is it? <laughs> Golf Magazine presents like 32 great holes, 36 great holes <laughs> featuring Fred couples. But you can choose Fred couples and. Fred Couples. That's right. <laughs> as your character. The only playable character was Fred Couples. <laughs> That's a completely different time when you would license an, a person for a game and Tommy have. Tommy Lasorda, yeah, like, Joe Montana and football. Only, and only have them being the yeah, only yeah. thing, and everyone else is just a generic, you know, football or person. Or everyone else is the same. Yeah, everyone else is the exact same. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I get to be Joe Montana, you get to be generic football man. <laughs> They should put Larry Probst in a, in a game. <laughs> Garagi-san, thank you for your leadership and vision. You can count on EA support every step of the way. EA Thanks. support, legendary They, they did EA support. support. They yeah. did. I mean, they supported the whole gen. And um, in the end, their games on PS3 were great. Madden. If you remember, a lot of the, there was a lot of initiative at EA to put out games that were basically the same on 360 and PS3, especially yeah. from Visceral, like the Dead Space games and I think that's, Dante's Inferno, they were basically they, identical. The, the, the demo they just showed did not look nearly as nice no. as this. No. No. This is where we Tiger. get the, the usual sport yeah. demo. It's a shame they didn't bring back Cyber Tiger. <laughs> what is this? Tease. Oh, Need for Speed Carbon. That was forgot about that. Army, Army of two. two! That's right, I forgot about that. Yeah, Need for Speed Carbon was terrible. Oh, that was actually all right. Airborne, Airborne showed, was great. They showed off a different area of it, too, than you're used to seeing. That's kind of Because Airborne yeah. took a different approach from Call of Duty that era. It wasn't nearly as scripted. Yeah. Like, you were, like, land in a map, that and was, you could kind of arbitrarily choose where you landed and such. Some of this is not in-game, but... No, yeah, no, 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 no. But all of those games would be better on 360. Thank you, Larry, and all the folks at Electronic... Every single one. <laughs> <laughs> Just to emphasize the point. All across the globe as a great storyteller in the role-playing game category. A company whose leading franchise... It's going to be Square Enix. Yeah. 
PlayStation experience in the 1990s. Take a look at Final Fantasy XIII on PlayStation 3. We just talked about this, coming. Alex. Yeah, we did. and uh, It's now the best on Xbox best One X. On X. <laughs> but it did have an awesome PS3 release. That yeah, the PS3 said. version is very good. Yeah. This is from the CGI intro. Yeah, but Square always shows CGI yeah, know, when they're I releasing know, games, you know, like... People still the thing go is, wild. For, F- you know? F- for 15, though, there wasn't a lot of CGI in the game, so... No, it's, it would be unnecessary because the character models are generally so great. There's just like a little bit in the when intro they re- and when they bothered. Oh, wow. Right? Yeah, when they re-revealed FF15, though, they first showed footage that didn't really end up in the final game. Okay, this is not this is mocked up, but it's not that inaccurate yeah, compared in terms to of what how the happens. Rendering looks, like, yeah, yeah, uh, that's well, BS. That's, that was BS. But, yeah. uh, it's not that high quality. Uh, no, that that uh, this is one of the stages in the game for sure. Stages, I say it's an RPG. Yeah. But when I think of thirteen, I think of it like stages because it's like okay, go to this, um, go to the third stage. But there's some bits in here where are there really projection textures on that stage for like the shadows I from can't the things remember. above you? I can't remember. Okay, like there's a, her hair is not That's nearly as pliable. CGI. Obviously, this is all CGI. Oh, they tried to duplicate but they that did in try the engine. It, it yeah. runs at 20 FPS yeah. in PS3. <laughs> <laughs> that, as I said in that video, that was one of those ones where I was like f5ing away, waiting for the Digital Foundry article on Final <laughs> Fantasy 13, waiting for the verdict. Game designer and creator Hideo Kojima of Konami. The video you're about to see. What a weird thing. Like, this is Metal Gear Solid 4, and this is the one that just, it's never moved from PlayStation 3. It's there forever, it seems. Like, it doesn't seem like it's ever going to be ported. I think it's also kind of like on a Frankenstein kind of engine. Yeah, I think think the engine is just kind of probably a mess. I don't know if they've kept all the source code or who could even work on it or, you know, it's it's probably something just lost to time in a sense. It's a weird looking game because some parts of it look very good, but yeah. other parts look very poor. That looks, uh, but that's the, the final game runs in that area also very similarly. Yeah, yeah. You know. Now this is what the game looks like. This is very accurate to the final. This looked worse than the previous year's demo. Yeah. The frame rate is better than this though in the final game. That is much lower here. That is terrible. Yeah, it is. It definitely doesn't run that slow. This was one of the first games that I ever tested for frame rate analysis. Yeah. And uh, you would just get a number back. It was a DOS prompt <laughs> that would scan an AVI file. You get a number back. Wow. Like, as an average? And it, yeah, yeah, an average number back. And it came back as uh, 21.7. Oh, no. And uh, I just thought to myself, wow. <laughs> if, if it, you know, publishing this would be incendiary. So the problem with this game is it was a double buffer V-Sync setup. Yeah. So, so like it, it would it would often go you would when you get drops it would go to twenty. Yeah. Uh, and if you were in small areas it would go to sixty. And again the game the final game runs better than this demo, m- most certainly. It still has some nasty slowdown, but this is way worse. Which is which also suggests it's very this is real. Like I yeah, think this it, is I think that captured is from their current state of development. But you remember the first demo at TGS, which looked better than this, ran at 60 FPS? On a PC. On a PC. Yeah. So when you saw this, it's like, okay, this looks good, but not as good as what we saw last year. This game's running all right. I really hope that Bluepoint, just taking a look at the Metal Gear games... Oh, what they, they, so they, they said that their next project was their most ambitious yet. What if they're remaking they Metal, Metal Gear Solid, Solid 4? 4. Oh, I never even thought of that. I mean, I, I don't want to get my hopes up, but that would be like the all. That would be so great. They could essentially go back and fix the game because they said yeah. they wanted to make gameplay changes. If like yeah, imagine if it controlled wow. more like Metal Gear Solid Five, Five or like a standard. Oh, that would be a huge thing if they did that. I'm just getting myself excited now. I should, really shouldn't do that because I can't imagine that's what they're doing. See, I <laughs> but think this... they do have a working relationship with Konami, though, so yeah, uh-huh. it's not impossible. And, and they always work with Japanese games. And they've worked on Kojima projects they've before. Worked, exactly. Yep. So, yeah, hope springs eternal. <laughs> but, but we aren't making any kind of hints here about... No, we are not make, I'm not making no. a hint. I know nothing about this. But uh, in but, terms of graphics, this game, I always love the character models, but I feel like they kind of stuck out in the environments after so the problem with the trailer. environment actually is that this is before uh, ambient occlusion was yeah. very common and it really needed it because like there was a lot of stark contrast between just objects setting in the world and the way the corners came together yeah 
like uh, ambient shadowing would have solved a lot of issues with the visuals. It was just too early. And obviously, MGS Five looks so much better. The Fox Engine yeah. on PS3 even looks better. It's dramatically improved. Coming 2007. Came in 2008. Yeah, in the summer. <laughs> we really do need this remastered. The whole install situation. Yeah, the really wobbly performance. Yeah, you literally had to wait like 10 minutes between every chapter. There's five chapters, but still. He's very pleased. It gives me great pleasure to introduce to you one of our company's founders oh. and the group CEO. Here we go. You ready? What's he going to be wearing? <laughs> I can't wait. Ken Kutaragi. Come on, be a crazy suit. Come on. Oh, yes. It is. Yes. <laughs> it's the all white uh, suit. Oh, yes. Look at that. Thank you for joining us today. So, have you enjoyed our latest progress on PlayStation 3 title? <laughs> um, yeah. Sorry, yeah, Ken. I'm excited to see so many great titles that are under development for PlayStation 3. Of course, PlayStation 3 is powered by the world's most powerful processor, as cell with RSX. But I have one more big thing. So I read that book that you recommended, uh, John, The oh, Race yeah. to Make a New Games yes. Machine. Ken, Ken doesn't come out well from it. No, he no. does not. So essentially he uh, caused a massive re-architecting of the cell just because <laughs> arbitrarily he decided it should have eight SBUs and because, not six. Because he said like it was beautiful. Eight, eight is beautiful. Eight is beautiful was his reasoning and to the engineers. There was nothing that IBM could do about it. They had... <laughs> And um, the um, IBM were going to fabricate the chip and they were expecting massive pro uh, profits from it. But because the chip was now bigger, mm -hmm. it ate into their profit margin significantly to the point uh. where the author of that book, who was there, who did work on the chip, uh, was kind of suggesting that the... There it is, by the way. They dropped um, so much money that that kind of prompted them to take the Microsoft... Yeah, Contract. exactly, exactly. Plus, there was it's seven SPEs in the final because of the uh, they had poor yields or something, yeah. so they were like basically shutting off one of the SPEs. Just and another one was used for security. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So you know, the developers ended up with six usable ones anyway. But this is uh, they're talking about six axis now, right? I don't. I think okay. So first they're saying. We didn't do the banana controller is what he's trying to say. He hasn't shown the motion control yet. This no, is just, he just look, showed it. it looks just like the PS2 controller again. Like, right. that's the point. So, look, they're going to sit on the table. Right, familiar controller. They're saying it looks the same. Look at Ken with his arm, like, man, the hand in the pocket. He's so casual looking. <laughs> yeah. This is amazing. But uh, since he's not on stage, he looks half the height here. <laughs> well, I think Phil is also very, very tall. Very tall. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Clearly... A little secret is waiting go. to be yeah. unveiled. I lo look how Phil's getting so excited. You aren't ready. Is this just an embarrassing pause, or is yeah something meant to be happening? I think it's getting ready. Now, I want you to watch this very... The ship wasn't settling <laughs> properly. Look at what I'm doing. I lift up the controller, and it flies. This controller They're not has yet. six degrees of freedom built into it as standard, with no external sensor required. So I That's can a jab at the Wii, yeah. which had already been revealed at the... Huh. ...using my hands as the entire input device. This standard feature controller will be packed in with every... But this is, and then they would reveal it doesn't have rumble. Yeah. Yeah, which but, is. Uh, uh, rumble was last gen, John. <laughs> didn't, didn't you get the memo? Yeah. And it was all about not paying some fee that they wanted to get out of essentially at the time. <laughs> when they were trying to spin it as if, oh, it's the, you know, it's really just a money thing. But the, there was enough complaint that they put it back in. And Metal Gear Solid 4, uh, the, the PS3 that it shipped with came with the DualShock 3. They re revealed the DualShock 3 and MGS4 had rumble. It's wireless, and uh, I think it's in our Sony rulebook that whenever we introduce a new piece of hardware, we have to use a duck. So uh, here I is... I wish they would show the duck. Yeah. Of, ...of the duck, and you can see me moving it around, but I've also got more movement as well, where I can toss it up it's in the air. Just a tantalizing hint. 
sort of some water deformation. Uh, X, Y, Z, um, and pitch roll in your lateral motion. Now, this controller, in being Bluetooth, being wireless, is Maybe actually... Maybe they're embarrassed to show it. I mean, after, <laughs> after all, the, the six-axis was, I think... Uh, how can I describe it? Lackluster, mm -hmm. poor, yeah. bolt-on implementations that actually got in the way of enjoying enjoying the games. Yeah, uh, we'll see that later. With admittedly, tonight. though, working the the motion steering for MotorStorm was pretty fun, but that was a rare exception. I guess the cooler thing is maybe Killzone 2's implementation with the sniper rifle isn't too bad. I oh, you, I think you can like slightly. Yeah, that that, right. that one's okay. not as bad. There's like some games that used it, but when it's just like like resistances, like just jiggle the controller right now because you have to. That's terrible. Uh, yeah, and balancing across planks on Uncharted. That was terrible. Which was just yeah. you know. Truly a fantastic innovation that is really going to add to the PlayStation 3 success story. <laughs> <laughs> that was really convincing, you know. Yeah. <laughs> really successful. It's... Uh huh. Kind of indicative, really, of where it was heading. Modify one of our games to really take advantage of this controller. And I'd like to share with you now Warhawk from Incognito. Mm -hmm. And here to demonstrate it for us yeah, is... Warhawk Dinger. went through a lot of changes, and mm. it came out as a multiplayer-only game. Instead and it was actually player, pretty was decent. Great. I thought it was yeah. a great game, but it was the, cool. the motion control... Was it, was it optional, motion control? Uh, I think it was. I'm pretty sure it was yeah, optional. I think, I think you could right. do analog yeah. stick. Plus, I think Warhawk shipped with a microphone. All that water was amazing yeah, at the time. A, I like the clouds, too. It was yeah, a the lovely clouds. looking game. Yeah, they're lit by the sun. Yeah. Actually, wow, that does still look pretty good. I think it had split screen as well. In fact, it did. Yeah, wow. It split screen, you could take two players online. <laughs> they're like, <laughs> they're way this overdoing is, this that. Is, this is... Here's the thing, though. These stage demos, if he's playing it live like it seems to be, um, there's a lot of lag there, latency. So when you like, add in the latency between the control and the display, but then you add in the six-axis latency, yeah, um, and the lack of like feedback, I can oh, imagine no. this being awful. Yeah, I mean, but yes, but the mixing desk uh, could also be adding lag as well. Yeah. Uh, That's what I mean. Yeah, right. the, the mixing desk would add lag. Yeah, there's that lag as well. Worse, right. He's into it though, isn't he? Look. I mean, I, th I still think those clouds look rather those wonderful. Those clouds do look good. Yeah. The water and the clouds, and yeah, this game is actually very attractive. Because it doesn't, uh, it uses the, the technology in a way like um, that's very tasteful. Yeah, it's not overdone. These are theatrics with the controller. It reminds me of a, you know when a child is really into a game. <laughs> yeah, they're bouncing oh, around. Yeah, and they're moving the controller to kind of make it go. You've yeah. seen uh, my son play Roblox. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that's what I was thinking of. He never sits down. <laughs> if only it had six-axis support. You know what they need? <laughs> they need at least to clone him and have multiplayer version of this. Basically, like, coordinated movements on stage. Oh, he's trying to land. Oh, no. Hey, but landing gear. Oh. Kind oh. of. Oh. Ah. Dang it. That should have been so much more cinematic. <laughs> it should have fallen off. Game. So, Dylan, before you go... Um, they don't exist anymore, do they? No. No. Sadly, they did great work. Twisted Metal Black was a phenomenal PS2 game. I loved it. And also, they did a Downhill Domination, which is super fun. Mm. War of the Monsters. They did some great PS2 games. And Warhawk was good, too. It allows us to change from static control mechanics to very kinetic control mechanics. And as a Man, he has some luscious game, hair. I'm yeah. incredibly excited about this, this possibility. Dylan, thank you very much indeed thank for sharing you. your game. That's great. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Um, don't you just love surprises? Isn't that the coolest thing? Uh, <laughs> Isn't that one. just the coolest <laughs> no, thing? No, no, no. <laughs> when you have to say something's cool out loud, uh, I don't know. Be sure to follow up with us in like five years when we reveal the back touch on Vita. <laughs> <laughs> so we have given you a glimpse into the world of PlayStation 3. A world that lives in high Oh man, this really yeah. didn't go very well for them overall. I've shown you that PlayStation 3 is the most advanced computer entertainment system in the world. They always Design called it. PlayStation 2 was also a computer, computer PlayStation 2 computer entertainment system. Yeah, Sony computer entertainment. Yeah. yeah. Latterly Sony computer entertainment. <laughs> and they did release PC games too, technically. So, it isn't. And 
Before we close our presentation for today, I did want to share with you some information that may have be interest to at least some of you. Is this it, John? Yeah. Well, the information that is of interest to at least some, some of you. Of you. <laughs> we will make PlayStation 3 available via a two configuration plan. Oh, okay. First, they're going to reveal this. Hard drive disk, and the other with a 20 gigabyte hard drive. PlayStation 3 will ship in Japan on November 11th, 2006. Okay, people see the first price. Open price? <laughs> <laughs> we don't know. We don't know. People are now trying to think, like, wait, wait, what's yen and dollars? <laughs> They're doing the math, like, really quickly. Yeah. Just remove the zeros. What's the, con what's the conversion rate right now? PlayStation 3 will be available at retail on November 17th, yeah. 2006. Ooh. The 20 gigabyte PlayStation 3 will retail for... 499 US dollars and 549 Canadian dollars. And the 60 gigabyte PlayStation 3 for 599 US dollars, 659 dollars Canadian. <sighs> this, th that little moment right there was such a, that was such a, one of those moments that really changed the course of console gaming forever, I think, right? Like yeah. that, that decision to do that price and that announcement right there would lost them, them for years. Yeah. yeah. And the thing is, you have to just like compare it to the Xbox 360, where if you're getting the baseline model, that cost what again? Well, the the arcade without, it, yeah. without the hard drive in the UK it was 220 pounds, which is you know, I don't know what it was in the US, but it I don't, was was it 299? I don't recall. It was, it I think was, it is, but like you're just looking at a huge price difference between the ability to just to play next gen games in total. So the thing is, is when the 360 uh, SKUs were announced, people were saying, "Oh, that's too expensive." I remember, right? Uh, and people were complaining about it. And then when Sony came and absolutely just went so far above the Microsoft pricing, I'm sure the Microsoft Xbox guys were like cheering really happy. at yeah. this. <laughs> they probably popping champagne bottles right Joining now. Joining us on this journey. You have already seen great... But, you know, the hard drive SKU wasn't that much more expensive than the arcade. No. I don't mm -hmm. think I was, it, was it just like a $50 difference, maybe? Was it like $349 and $399? Or was it oh, two... Oh, man, I'll have to look that up. I yeah, forget. we went really well. Take two. Rockstar Games, Sega of Japan, Sega of America, Pandemic Studios, and many others. Pandemic. Pandemic. That's right. Yeah. They got integrated into Bioware and then kind of disappeared. Yeah. Yukes. Taito, that's New great. New original IP from both first. How many and of these are gone? A lot Lucas of them. Arts, Midway, Midway Arts. Pandemic, THQ, Two. technically. Two, 4J. 4J did that perfect dark yeah. one. Atari Europe, are they still? And as I mentioned previously, at E3 this year, we have a sampling of titles for PlayStation 3 playable for the very first time. I'm kind of curious now about the launch prices on the 360. <laughs> I can check real quick. People in the world to get your hands on some of the playable titles. You know, live checking. We're at the end of this thing anyway, so we're not. Let's just do it. Ladies and gentlemen, a new era for Sony Computer Entertainment begins with PlayStation 3 now. Thank you very much. And have now, a right now. When we eventually <laughs> okay, so it was 399 USD for the the premium model and 299 yes. yeah, for see, the it, arcade. It was super cheap in the UK, 210 pounds. So, 210 pounds or 279 for the premium. Yeah. So you're looking at a to the highest end lowest end model between 360 and PS3 is 300 US dollars. So so <laughs> That's three, huge. 399 for this this 20 gig 360 and 499 for the 20 gig PS3. Yeah. But, but then but everybody's like, "Why? Well, I, I want the four or the five ninety nine one because yeah. it's the better one." And, but yeah. I'm not getting a Blu-ray drive for the three sixty. But I have to buy a Wi-Fi dongle. There was all of these butts that came in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The three sixty. But the yeah. point is that you know they made the right call in. in <sighs> yeah. I'm trying to think about how commonplace Wi-Fi was during that period in general. Uh, it was pretty common. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty common. Yeah. But so here we are. We're, we're we've we've reached the end. We've seen it all again. What do you guys think? A lack of games, I would say in general, that were really impressive. There was like two demos. I think like Heavenly Sword looked great, and sure. uh, you know, obviously the game came out, and you can have your own opinion of it. But it was a cool demo to show off. But another than a couple of third-party titles being on there, it lacked a lot of oomph. 
of like hard hitting things. I mean, MGS4, if you saw that and you looked at the frame rate there live, it was really bad. And if you thought that's what's coming out at that point in time, in comparison to the other games, it, it's really underwhelming. And then the price. <laughs> well, I thought it was awful. Um, last year they presented a vision of the future of gaming. This was just like a random collection of, of really poor demos for the most part. And um, they were. it looked worse than the console that was already out. By that, far. That's, that's, yeah. that's like, the problem. The games didn't look good week. at this point. But yeah. handed to them, they did kind of pull out of the tailspin. And yeah. PlayStation 3 did become a successful machine in the end. Mm -hmm. So, you know... It's still a good system, but they absolutely fumbled the lead. They opened up the market to Microsoft on the 360, but then also Nintendo came in with that curveball, took everybody out with uh, the Wii in terms of sales numbers anyway. But so Sony was kind of the weakest out of the gate on this one. I don't think anybody saw that coming. No, mm -hmm. after the PS2 where it was just huge. And I, I think leading the conference up with two demos that were excruciatingly long and relatively boring... Like the yeah, Grand with that and GT, the HD. Yeah, the... I think the irony is that uh, Sony came back by effectively uh, using the 360 strategy, which was to have the cheaper console with the more powerful GPU. Yep. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's. I'm going to be kind of curious to see if that's the case next that's gen changed. as well, to see whether you know the the one that emerges triumphant will be the you know the best price versus performance, the best GPU. I kind of, you know, I just think it's a formula you can't beat. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I guess also hyping 1080p when it's actual in-practice implementation on the system is very rare for many games. Just, I don't like that. Just as an end note, I do remember now I wasn't here. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> Good to know. It comes up. And then we see Richard scroll across yeah, the screen here. Yeah. <laughs> But for everybody listening, I guess uh, you were kind of here in spirit today if you made yeah. it this far in the video. So we should probably finish off here. So yeah. thanks for joining me, guys. Yeah, no thanks problems. a lot. After suffering through that uh, <laughs> that 10-hour GTHD demo, yeah. uh, here we are. We made it. So if you enjoyed this very, very long video, uh, be sure to let us know by liking, subscribing, buying PlayStation 3 for $599, <laughs> US dollars. ring the notification bell, Possibly buy the four ninety nine US dollar <laughs> PlayStation three and follow us on Twitter. Yeah. And until next time, this is John Rich and Alex signing off. This is Chad Warden here. Alright, I'm talking about that PS triple. PS triple. The PS triple. I ain't talking about that Wii. But you know what I'm trying to say? I'm trying to say is that Come on now. Wii PS triple. Thank <laughs> you.